morning, and welcome to another episode of the Indigenous Project, the only internet show that I'm in. And in today's episode, our phrase of the day is total identity theft. Yes, you've heard of identity theft. You've maybe even been a victim of identity theft, but have you been a victim of total identity theft? Totally? Totally. Yes, total identity theft. That's where someone steals your identity, not just for a long, short period of time, but for an extended period of time. They go about their day-to-day -day life pretending they are somebody else that they've stolen their identity from. <laughs> Lovely, concise definition. A woman in Kansas received an 18-month jail sentence for totally stealing another woman's identity for 12 years. No big deal. Actually, that sounds like kind of a light sentence to be stealing someone's identity for that long. But she went ahead and uh, not only opened up a bank account, credit cards, she got a mortgage for a house, she had some kids, and put this fake identity name as the mother of the kids, uh, leading to a very complicated pain in the butt uh, process for the actual woman whose identity was stolen. Candida Gutierrez, that is the name of the woman whose identity was stolen. So in fact, there were two Candida Gutierrez's. I checked it out on Facebook, there's over a dozen Candida Gutierrez's. So this is an epidemic, people. We need to stop all these people from um, stealing the identity of this poor woman. I also double-checked myself, there's another Jim Rule running around um, stealing my identity uh, totally. He's just a different guy, um, but that is out there. People could be stealing my identity. That's why I have bad credit. There's really no incentive to steal my identity, so yeah, good luck getting a home mortgage. I'm sorry, Mr. Rule, you've been turned down for a car loan. You've apparently stolen the wrong identity. Next time, just steal a car. I'm just worried about someone stealing my identity and then doing a better job of it. I'm sorry, Jim Rule, we found another Jim Rule, and he's just far more effective. He doesn't uh, lose his train of thought every three minutes, and uh, he's a wonderful father. You're a great father, but he's even better. This whole thing reminds me of the time I forgot to log out of a computer in college and someone went into my email and sent out dirty poems to every woman on my contact list. Thanks a lot, douchebag. This depressing news out of England, Nick D'Aloisio, however the heck you pronounce that, he's just a 17 year old. Anyway, he made an app called Sumly and sold it to Yahoo for reportedly millions of dollars. So he might as well give up now. Why did I even click on this article? You should too, the link's down below, go for it. Make yourself happy. I'm happy for him. Yay. I should really get back into computer programming. Ooh. Anyway, his app uh, condenses news items uh, down to easily read blurbs that can be used on a mobile phone. Sounds pretty simple. Doesn't sound like it's worth millions of dollars. Here's an alternative headline. Yahoo turns to 17 year old to turn company around. You put out stories like this, that's like encouraging us to just start cranking out crappy apps. It's taking me forever to get rich quick. Now, I hope this 17-year-old just doesn't spend it all in one place. Of course, when I was 17, I don't think I would have a clue on how to blow that kind of money. What, on, on prom? He's a computer geek. He's not going to prom anyway. Maybe he'll spend it all on special mounts in World of Warcraft. He's not even old enough to vote, but he could probably buy a few. Speaking of brackets being blown up in the opening weekend of the NCAA tournament, Ben Howland and Tubby Smith both got fired because their brackets were so bad. Well, their teams lost, so they got fired. In hindsight, maybe they should have given better pep talks to their players. Come on, guys. Let's win this game or they're going to fire me. I have five kids. I got five kids to feed. Total recall reference, in case you missed it. Keep in mind, Tubby Smith got over $2 million in his buyout clause. That is one fat lump sum unemployment check. If he's anything like my friends who lost their jobs, he might as well just sit down and play some World of Warcraft. That's a tough gig, UCLA. Kind of hard to work in the shadow of John Wooden. Hey, I'm sorry. I'm not an iconic coaching legend. I only went to three Final Fours in the last 10 years. Obviously, I suck at this. If Tubby Smith had gotten Minnesota to three Final Fours in the last 10 years, they'd name a shoot after him. They'd put a statue up. Last week, two people from Iceland died while skydiving in Florida. One was the instructor, one was a student. So apparently, I'm right. I accompanied a friend of mine skydiving not too long ago, and he kept insisting on what a coward I was for not going along with him. I just stayed and watched because I don't want to die. It's not that I was scared. I just don't want to die. Heck, I got a four-year-old kid. Probably not a good idea to die when you have a responsibility like that. And they say, oh, what are the odds? Oh, you're just scared. You're being paranoid. Oh, yeah? Two years later, I found a news article that justifies my paranoia. That's all you got to do, people, to justify your paranoia. Just keep scarring the news, and eventually, you'll find that justification. You just got to hang in there, like I did. 
and I'm right. And I don't care if you've had some 4,000 jumps without an incident. I've played poker, all right? If you play enough poker, you're gonna see a bad beat. And in skydiving, a bad beat kinda sucks. According to the article, link below, the skydiving industry is self-regulated. Nothing more reassuring than self-regulated. Hell, I won't even do a trust fall, much less a fall from a plane. If I wanna get adrenaline rush, I'll go to a dance club and attempt and fail to ask a woman out dancing. That's, that's more than enough fear in my life that I would need. They did wear their helmets. I avoid activities where you wear helmets. Roller derby, skydiving, football, spelunking. Besides, I have a ginormous head, so putting a helmet on top of that even makes it even worse. I don't need that. And I live in Los Angeles, so riding a bicycle is pretty much out. I don't want to die that much. Speaking of biking, my sister just broke her collarbone mountain biking. So thanks, sis, for the reminder not to do that. Hope you get better soon. Uh, so hey, that wraps it up for this episode of the Indigener Project. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, and please also click the like button.